Good Saturday morning, everybody. Great news on the weather front. Things are much cooler than what they were last week. You don't know how tiring it was to tell everybody again and again and again about record highs every single day. So things looking a lot nicer across the Mid-South as we go into the rest of the weekend. We'll talk more about the forecast coming up here in just a little while. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is our exclusive video weather blog from the News Channel 3 studios in downtown Memphis. It's called Weather Overtime. Got questions or suggestions? Please let me know about what you want to see on here and we'll get those into the format as much as we possibly can. We focus again on what's timely, winter weather and the winter season, severe weather when necessary, things like that. Today pretty quiet and dry so we'll be focusing on a couple of other things including burn bands and taking a look at what's going on in the skies for later on tonight. I'd like to get in touch with me, aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter or austin.onic at WREG.com. Forecast in the red bar at the bottom of your screen should be again Clouds mixed in with the sunshine for today. Winds out of the northeast. Maybe a little breezy at times, but not too bad. And temperatures back into the 70s. Coming up later on tonight, temperatures never know how to point with my left hand here. Going into the 50s later on this evening. Lower 50s, maybe a few upper 40s out there. Winds continue out of the northeast and we'll be looking at a few clouds from time to time. But otherwise quiet, dry, and unfortunately that's a bit of a problem because we could definitely use some more rainfall across much of the Mid-South area. Over the next three hours, temperatures rising nicely going back to around 60 degrees by the time we hit mid to late morning. Rest of the morning into this afternoon, pleasant temperatures back in the upper 60s, coming close to the lower 70s, which is almost exactly where we should be for this time of the year. So looking very quiet across the Mid-South and very dry, but wildfire dangers, that's a bit of a problem. Cough temp decks for today. May you want to think about a hot cup of java for early this morning, and then as you go into later on this afternoon, probably something to cool you off as temperatures will be back on the warm side, but kind of nice to get back to the hot coffee out there without having to boil yourself over and all those warmer temperatures out there for the rest of the day. No earthquakes to report in the Mid-South area over the last 24 hours, so looking very quiet. Information courtesy of the United States Geological Survey and from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis. Wildfire danger, one of the big weather stories out there, as shown as elevated for right now. That again is going to be the main problem out there as the dry conditions across the Mid-South leach more of the moisture away from the plants and that's going to cause the increased risk of wildfire danger. New counties have been added to the burn ban list in Arkansas, including Arkansas County, Faulkner County, Jefferson, Johnson, Logan, Monroe, Pike, Washita, and White counties have been added to the list, and there's more coming over the next few days. All of the Mississippi counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area, basically all of northern Mississippi, and a lot of the counties in and around portions of the rest of the area down to the south, only a few counties in Mississippi are not not under burn bans at this time. So that again is going to be something to watch out for. All it's going to take is one stray spark or a cigarette butt tossed carelessly away and we are going to see some very big wildfires out there. So what's the deal with Tennessee? Nothing being issued at this time. Well the state of Tennessee does not issue burn bans except on an exceptional need basis. Now there are burn permits that can be issued for things like bonfires at fall celebrations things like that going on, but there's nothing in effect for right now. Uh, definitely want to call your fire department or your forestry division to see if that is the case. All it takes, again, one stray spark drifting away from a bonfire or an unattended backyard barbecue, and we could be seeing some very big problems, including life-threatening problems uh, for parts of the area. So something to think about there if you have anything in the way of plans for outdoor burning, again, with barbecue pits and things like that. Heading into the rest of the next several days, this number unlikely to change. No rainfall yesterday. We're behind for the month. It was a dry October. It was a very dry September and a very dry latter half of August. So now our surplus is down to about eight and two-thirds inches for the year. If this continues, we may finish up with a bit of a surplus, but probably not by much anytime soon. Temperatures for yesterday, 76, way above normal, but still more comfortable than it has been. 56 are low, 47 the normal. Today's record high, 82. We're very proud to note that we will not be coming close to that. 24, the record low temperature set back in 1991, a record high, I should say, of 82, set back in 2005. Rest of the day today, pleasant, but those clouds off and on, so not totally sunny throughout the rest of the day temperatures for high is going to be going back into and around the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s and then cooling off pretty rapidly through about sunset and into this evening news channel 3 at 10 temperatures back in the lower 
to the mid 50s to upper 60s in some cases upper 40s to lower 50s into overnight don't forget to change that clock back one hour daylight saving time ends tonight so don't want to wind up uh, being late for everything for tomorrow at 6 a.m. temperatures on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Going to be seeing numbers back into around the mid to upper 40s to lower 50s across much of the Mid-South area. So a very pleasant Saturday coming up. No problems at all. Dry, sunny, cool in the morning, warm in the afternoon, and pretty close to normal. Back in the mid-70s for tomorrow. Again, a little bit above normal for Sunday and Monday. More clouds expected as we go toward Monday with a chance of showers on Election Day. Not great chances, but we will be seeing again the potential for some activity out there. Maybe the chance of another shower on Veterans Day, but right now we're going to keep the percentage at zero because it just does not appear too likely, and a lot of the computer models are just not in agreement over what we're seeing here. Through the extended forecast, anything involving rainfall? Doesn't look like it. No time in the near future do we see anything in the way of a substantial, sustained chance of rainfall. Minimal chances only, and that is going to be just about it. Little, if anything, going to be expected for the possibility of anything involving showers or thunderstorms across much of the Mid-South anytime soon. Tonight's stargazing conditions, not too bad, but not exactly all that good either. So we're going to be seeing again uh, the potential for a few clouds drifting on through the area, which could cause fair viewing conditions, maybe a little bit less than perfect out there for stargazing, especially into the early morning hours. That's where the humidity increases and the chance of clouds as well. Viewing conditions tonight should allow for a nice view of the crescent moon and Mars Mars close together in the southern skies. The moon is heading for first quarter, November the 7th. The torrid meteor shower is just past its peak, but it's a good possibility you're going to be able to see some stragglers off of that. So dark skies away from city lights, and you should have a good possibility of being able to see the occasional leftover torrid meteor shower, which could last for a while out there. Iridium satellite flares, a brief one this evening in the northeastern skies fairly high up, not close to the horizon, so you'll have to look upwards, and it's not going to be a huge flare, but it will be noticeable if the cloud cover continues to uh, hold viewing conditions good, but it's going to be close to partly cloudy, so it's going to be kind of a judgment call as to what we'll look for on this. Again, what you'll be looking for is a brightening of a light in the skies, no blinking lights, it's not an airplane, this is an Iridium Communications Network satellite, and the mirrors, the solar panels on the craft, on the satellite will briefly reflect sunlight back to the Earth at about 7.09 p.m. tonight. It'll fade in, flare for a second, and then fade back out. The whole thing will take less than about 15 to 20 seconds, so a good opportunity to learn more about that for later on this evening. Social Media Center, thanks to everybody for sending in some great ones. Last week, Memphis Tom sending in a great sunset shot. Louis Haskett uh, sending in a great one to wrap up the work week, so thanks a lot to sending that in from Arkansas around Pine Knot, if I'm not mistaken. No location, but beautiful sunrise this morning from T.R. Stewart, Stewart Photos, and thanks to everybody for sending that in. Want to see these and others? Go to twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3. Tune in for my forecast throughout the weekend on Country 90 2.5 and Oldies 102.3 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network. And of course, you can get me on social media throughout the weekend as well. And our app available for your particular device's communications operating system. All you have to do is go to the, your particular app store and search WREG Weather for our brand new and improved weather app. Questions for the weekend? Anything in the way of problems? Again, we'll have another weather segment coming up later on tonight. Plus, we'll have Skyblog 3 online so you can see what's going on in the Mid South guys, including that iridium flare that we talked about, and more information coming up tonight after football. Could be on a little bit on the late side, and so again, not seeing too much of any major concerns for any severe weather interruptions or anything like that. Thanks to the Memphis Astronomical Society for inviting me to talk about weather websites for amateur astronomers last night to help you improve your chances of staying out in the field and not scheduling a bust of a weather forecast. So it's something you can get updated on. So thanks a lot for them. If you'd like to see more about them, memphisastro.org. And thanking Nina Harrelson, our brand new uh, anchor for the Daybreak program. She started early this morning. Please join me in giving her a warm News Channel 3 welcome. And of course, I'll have your forecast coming up a little bit later on tonight on News Channel 3. Direct from the News Channel 3 Weather Center in downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick with our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime for Saturday morning, November 5th. Thanks for joining me here, and stay tuned for more coming up with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend.